Hey guys, Mel the Train Shooter here with another Back to Basics tutorial for you. And this Back to Basics tutorial, what we're going to be looking at is how to make buildings and ruins out of blue, thin blue polystyrene foam. Okay, if you've never come across this stuff before, yeah, this is craft foam. Uh, it's a high density extruded polystyrene and it's, avail it's available in various sort of sheets of various thicknesses. Okay, now this is 10 mil. Okay, uh, you can get everything I think from 5 mil all the way up to about 3 inches thick. When you get to the 3 inch thick sort of side, the techniques etc are very much like the stuff that we do with our pink polystyrene. Okay, but specifically in this video I want to sort of show you the sort of techniques of doing buildings and sort of more construction stuff. Now when we typically do these back to basics videos what I do is I just show you the techniques but we don't really build anything. I've decided what we'll do with this one is I'll go through all the techniques and I'll show you a few various things but at the same time I'll get together the bits yeah to make a small tower or something like that yeah and then we'll also build that at the end so you can actually see the techniques in application you know and see what you can sort of the results you can get with them okay so that's the battle plan so as I said this is a high density yeah and by high density if I bring this up to the camera yeah yeah, you can hear that nice crisp snap. Okay, and if you look at it, you know, it's not ripped or anything like that. Yeah, so it's really good for making buildings. Now, this stuff is, its brand name is Craft Rome, and I get it from a company called Panel Systems in the UK. Uh, they sell it in big boxes of, I think it's about a foot thick, I think there's 30 sheets in a box, uh, depending on how thick the thickness is, depends on how many sheets you get. Unfortunately, they don't sell it as individuals, but you can buy it on eBay as individuals, etc. Uh, so yeah, that's where I get it from. Uh, outside the UK, I'm sorry I don't know, you'll have to nose around, but if you do find any sources and you're outside the UK, throw them in the comments for those people who are outside the UK. And if you're looking for it, yeah, and you're outside the UK, check the comments, guys. So what we actually do going to cover in this video, right, what I reckon we should cover is basic cutting techniques, yeah, then some fancy cutting techniques, then we can look at some engraving, yeah, and then we'll look at some basic construction techniques and I'll throw a few other things in as well. We're sort of, we're going along, I've got a rough idea about what I want to show you, but, you know, things always come up. Right, so, let me get some tools. Right guys, basic tools for working with this stuff. You can use hot wire cutters, yeah, but that's very much like shaping hills, etc, that sort of stuff. Yeah, when, you, when you're making buildings and ruins and that sort of stuff, you really want to be looking at a blade. Now, I'll be using this blade. I've also got a standard hobby scalpel that I use as well. Another essential is obviously a metal ruler. Yeah, because you're working with, you can't use a wooden ruler when you're working with blades. Yeah, another factor is a T-square. Yeah, preferably one with an overhanging lip. Yeah, and by overhanging lip I mean a bit where when we put it down we can put it up against an edge and it'll lock and, and go straight for us. So, first basic cuts. Yeah, there's a couple of techniques. Now, if you're cutting small pieces you can get away with a smaller ruler, okay, you can get away with not having to use pins or anything like that. But, when you're doing large cuts there's a couple of things I recommend. First off, yeah, I need to cut a strip, and we'll, we'll make it six inches, yeah, and what I'm going to do is, I've got my T-square, I put it down, yeah, and then use my blade, not a pencil or anything like that, to put a precision cut in at the six inch mark, okay, and I come over here, do the same over here, yeah, and that's our marks for our six inch strip. Six inch, six inch strip. <laughs> right, so get a metal ruler. Yeah, place it down. Yeah, and get in position. Now, if you've if you've got a firm, steady hand and you're not worried worried about the ruler slipping, yeah, then you can go straight to cutting from here. But yeah, I tend to get a bit of a wobble because obviously you hold the ruler in the middle. Yeah, so what I do is hold the ruler down. Pins, okay, just standard pins, and I'm just dropping them the other side of the ruler. Okay, one at the top, one at the bottom, and hey presto, 
yeah, my ruler now, I can move my ruler around, I can bring it back, and it's pretty much set solid. Obviously don't whack it like I just did. Right, so, first off, yeah, and when you're cutting, the key point is to keep your blade as straight as possible. First cut, just go through and make an impression cut. Right, once your impression cut's done, and to be truthful, I'm going to spin this round because I'm left-handed and that's, I don't like cutting with my wrong hand, you know, with the wrong hand, it feels awkward. Yeah, so the next cut. Yeah, and when I'm cutting, I'm keeping the blade as, as close to the surface. And by that, what I mean is, as I'm cutting, I'm cutting like that. I'm not cutting like that. If I cut like that, there's less of a surface area across the foam, yeah, and I drag and there's a chance that I can rip it. If I cut it with, a, like, a very low angle of incline, it gets a much smoother cut. There we go. And you can see just there where I had my incline, just high, and then I corrected it. And on this side, much cleaner. Right, so that's that bit done. Now I need to cut this out because what we're going to do, should we do some towers? Let's do a tower. So there I have it. I've got my four little bits. I made a mistake with one of them, so I just swung it round and did another cut. Yeah, no one's perfect. Right, and this is how our tower is going to go. Not like that, something like... That. Okay? Now, I need to do a few other cuts, I can do those off camera, but what you're saying is, that's all very well, Mal, you've sh shown us how to cut nice, clean, square lines and make boxes, great. But what about if we want to do sort of different cuts, things like that? Well, yeah, if you want to do angled cuts, so let's say we've got this bit, okay? And you want to do a cut, yeah, like that. Now, obviously, you can measure it, you can cut it directly. There are a few other sort of techniques, yeah. If you need to do a lot of the same cut and, ro uh, and rather large, what you call it, uh, numbers of them, yeah, then what I recommend you do is, yeah, get yourself some nails and get yourself a hammer. Yeah, the terrain shooter hammer. The kids got me this hammer after they broke my last one. They bought it with their own pocket money. Yeah, it is my most favourite hammer. But anyway, get your nails. Yeah. And what you do is not two in. Yeah, once you've, once you've got your two nails in, come along with your ruler, figure out whereabouts you want that cut. So, for example, let's say that I want to put that cut there. Yeah, move your, your cardboard till you get exactly right where you want the angle. Come in, put your next nail in. Yeah, and that's where it's going to go. Yeah, and once you knock that nail in, what you'll be left with is a template that you can... Oh, that's Dave's dog. Uh, all you'll be left with is sort of a template that you can slide lots of sort of square sheets up to, put your ruler on, be guaranteed that every time you do this cut, it will be exactly the same. Yeah, it's really simple and it's really good for mass producing. Now, obviously, if you want to do smaller pieces, you know, a hammer, nails, it's slightly overkill. And so what you can do is you can do something like this. Yeah, and you can get Lego and basically make a form. Yeah, a template, a guide. Uh, each Lego block, each sort of square, is 15 millimetres by 15 millimetres. Yeah, so this is 22.5, and that should be 50. Yeah, and if I put it on, yeah, pretty much bang on 50, just slightly off. 
Yeah, so that's great. Now where it comes in handy is you can very quickly put it up to your corner. Yeah, get your ruler. Can I use this one? Is it going to, yeah? Hold it. Cut it. And there you go, yeah? And you can, you, by using that template, you can carry that across to multiple pieces. Yeah, and I'm just going to do that because I want a few of these for our little project. Right, I'm going to crack on, but first, sort of Dave Dog. So here we have them, guys. Yeah, just using my simple little form. Yeah. I've managed to make a load of individuals that are all exactly the same. Okay? Now, yeah. So that's great for mass producing. Now, you could say, what about curves and stuff like that? If you're going to go for curves, then what you really need to do is make some cardboard templates or some sort of templates that you can put either side of the sheet, pin in, and then go round with a hot wire cutter because obviously a blade isn't brilliant at that sort of stuff. Yeah, because obviously you're going round. You can do it with a scalpel, it just takes time, it takes practice. I mean, you can freehand it if you want. It really comes down to sort of how skilled you are. Now I'm going to sort of keep away from doing curves on this because I don't really want to have any curves on this build, to be perfectly honest. And you get the idea. I mean, it literally is, you know. If you're doing curves, just make sure that, you know, your first cut, your guide cut is really shallow. Is this even on camera? Yeah, it's on camera. Yeah, and then make your, what you call it, make your deeper cuts along the curves, but in straight lines. Yeah, and then slowly what you'll do is you'll, you'll work your way in. You'll be able to sort of... See, I've got to do it now just to show you. The problem is when you're doing, what you call it, curves, yeah, that to get the angle, you've got to go in quite steep. Okay, but that causes the dragging, which is why I say get the, go in quite shallow first to get the actual cut, yeah, and then use long cuts yeah at that shallow incline to avoid the ripping remember this stuff can be sanded so don't worry about having to get it perfectly clean yeah you just want to avoid that ripping really i should get a scalpel for this but break that there you go it's a rough and ready job, but you get the idea. Basically, yeah, because of that angle of incline and that ripping texture, okay, you've got to go really shallow and try and use as many straight cuts as possible. Like I say, it's a lot easier with a hot wire cutter, to be perfectly honest, than a template. But you can do it freehand. Right. So what else can we do? Well, we've done cutting bigs. We've done how to do cut, sort of angle cuts and precise angle cuts. We'll do some beveling, yeah? So, uh, what should we do? Right, I think the first thing we need to do is... See, oh, I'm getting brain ache here. Let's cut some, what you call it, some bevel strips for it. Yeah, so if I remember this was six inches, yeah, uh, we want... We're going to put baluster... Uh, crenulations around the top so let's go for five and a half inches yeah we're going to need a few of them so I'm going to cut okay I'll be back in a sec right before we get on to beveling yeah I thought I better sort of talk about doing inner cuts and that's cuts inside because obviously you're going to be wanting to put windows and that sort of stuff into these sort of buildings now what I've done is if I bring that up Get the, get it so the light's just right, get it right. Yeah, hopefully you should be able to see that I've etched out my doorway there. Okay, and I've just used my T-square and measured it up and measured it against an orc. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a scalpel blade, yeah, and I'm going to cut that out. Now, when I do my cuts, I always start, obviously I want those nice shallow cuts, yeah, I always start in a corner and work towards the centre of the cut. So in the case of 
just coming straight down, I can just work in the top corner. Yeah, and that will give me one nice cut. So I'll quickly do this on the other side. And then finally, when we do this centre one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from each corner into the middle. Yeah, and the reason being is you can't cut right up into another area without putting a deep cut into the watch gullet, into the other side. Now, little shallow cuts we can cover over with a bit of filler. They're not going to be a problem. They'll sand out. Yeah, but with regards to internal cuts, we want to keep those nice and clean. And there we have it guys, right, if I bring this up and let it focus, focus damn you, yeah there you go, as you can see it's a lovely clean cut, we haven't cut into the corners, always just remember whenever you're cutting internally, just cut from the corners to the centre of the cut, okay, nice shallow cuts and it's best using sort of a, a hobby blade, right, now, what's up, right, let me just run over what we've covered, We've covered the basic cuts, we've covered cutting angles, uh, we've covered cutting curves, we've covered cutting internal cuts. Right, I'm going to have a quick brew and then we'll crack on with Beverly. Okay guys, we've done all our basic cuts and I've got all, together all the components I sort of need to build that tower. Now we want to add some detailing. Now as I said before, this is, what you call it, 10 mil. Uh, blue foam, okay. You can get it in 5mm, you can do your design in depth stuff with multiple layers like we did with the foam board builds and the foam board playlist. Yeah, but, yeah, in this case, because I have had to buy big packs of it, I've only got 10mm, so I need to cut the, the detailing in, and that means bevel it. So what I've done is I've got a 5mm piece of balsa wood here, and I've hot glued it down so it's nice and sturdy. I'm not going to shake it too much, but it, it's fine for what we need it to do. And I've glued it exactly two millimetres, sorry, two inches away from this edge. Okay, and I'll explain why in a little while, but that's sort of important. Yeah, so when it comes to beveling, we can do some funky stuff. I've just got to realise what bits I've got here now. What's that? What are these for? Oh yeah, I know what those, those are for. Right. Okay, let's have a look. Let's get a piece. That'll do nicely. Right, we've got a piece of what you call it, blue foam. Okay, and what we're going to do is... We're going to use this as a guide, yeah, to run our scalpel down so we can get a cut exactly halfway in. So I'm going to do that quickly now. Yeah, once again, it's the angle that counts. Keep it nice and shallow, yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it up that way. Guide cut first, nice and shallow. Make sure that you don't cut into the balsa. And that comes again. Just there. And there you go, right, if I bring this up to the camera, yeah, an absolute beautiful bevel, okay? So that's a simple way of getting accurate cuts, yeah, into your foam, especially your 10 mil stuff. And as you can see, it's come off in just one clean strip. It takes a couple of times, it's not a problem. 
Now, there are other ways of doing it as well. Yeah, and what I came up with is I made this tool. Let me bring it up. Okay, and this is two bits of balsa wood, yeah, with a scalpel blade glued in between it. Go lie down, blade. Go on. He's wandering. He's missing his dad. We're looking after Dave's dog at the minute, so he's not settled completely. And when I'm talking, but no one's here, he sort of gets confused. <laughs> he's wondering who I'm talking to, so he keeps coming in. Right, uh, what you call it? The blade itself is extended exactly the same thickness as the balsa wood. Yeah, so. Yeah, and what this allows me to do is if I get, say, this. Yeah, I can come along. And do it as quick as that. Okay. Now, it's curved. Yeah, so I can use it inside cuts. And what I mean by that is, yeah, if we get our doorway, which we'll have, right, that's where I did the cut, so we'll have this is the outside. So it needs to go this way. Okay, guys, we're back. Right, what I've done is I've cut a free bit of bevel guide, very much like this. Just a bit of balsa wood, a couple of pins in it to hold it in place. Yeah, I didn't think that last one through. I push, push those in, and then I can use those as a guide for my scalpel. Yeah, so. Flip it over, yeah, do very much the same here. So line it up. Push my pins down, use it as a guide. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, it's one of those times when you have to concentrate on what you're doing rather than... And then just cut into there, just to cut that bit out. There we go. So if I bring that up, yeah, you can see by using that guide, yeah, we've managed to cut a nice clean bevel into there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around bevel that. I'm going to bevel some of these. I'm going to bevel some more of these ready for our construction. There's only one last thing I quickly want to show you. Okay, now obviously that we've, we've covered how to do nice, clean, long bevels. We've covered our little beveling tool. Yeah, a little faux pas on the door, but hey, it's a melt video, isn't it? Yeah, but I have showed you how to use the free guide you know, with the pins and a bit of what you call it, balsa wood to sort of get accurate cuts on the inside of these sort of things. Yeah, I'll do more on that in a minute. The last one I want to show you, okay, is, remember when I said I glued this two inches away from this edge? And I'm going to have to move the camera for this. Yeah, so let me so move there we are. there. Okay, cut these bits out so they can sit, and they just sort of overlap that edge. And the reason that I've done this is because I've shown you how to do sort of angular cuts and obviously by changing the sort of thickness of your guide, yeah, your balsa wood guide, you can do different thicknesses, but it's still very angular. And I want to show you quickly a beveling technique. Okay, now this can be done on any sort of thickness and any sort of width. It all comes down to how wide your hot wire cutter is. And you need a hot wire cutter for this because you can't really do it properly with a blade. Yeah, because you're cutting through such a large surface area. And the idea is that what we're going to do is we're going to press our hot wire cutter down and actually push it down, yeah, so that the wire is resting firmly on there and firmly on that edge. And then we're going to drag it all the way down in one nice smooth action. So heat it up. All the way down. Keep that pressure down. That's really important. Don't stop. 
because then you'll have like a melt line. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Yeah, but using that simple technique, what we've managed to do is cut ourselves a bevel. Yeah, so see how it's nice and nice and thin. <laughs> I always get stuck with that one. Yeah, nice and thick, thin. Yeah, nice angle. I'm waving it all over the place here. Right, but what I want to do is very quickly. Where's my ruler? Yeah, it is place that against my wood. Place that against my wood. Get my blade. Cut off the bottom bit. And then we have that. Okay. Now if you look at the cross section, it's beveled. It's under our 5mm, so trust me, it'll work with our design. Okay. And it's, what you call it, it's thinner there, but it's not tapering off to like a whimsy flat sort of thing. A whimsy flat sort of thing. What the hell are you going on about, folks? Right, so I need to save that. Now, this was our spare bit. Very quickly, just to show you, if you don't, now this isn't exact because the bevel's off on this, but it's good enough to show you. If, right, I'm going to bring it down, then I'm going to stop, and then I'm going to carry on. Yeah, and then on this bit, I'm just going to waver a bit and not push it down a bit. And back to straight. Okay. Now, when I stopped, yeah, you get a melt line. That's because as you're cutting, the heat in the wire gets transferred to the polystyrene to melt the polystyrene. If you stop for a second, it gets a chance to build up, yeah, and it radiates that heat out. Yeah, and that causes a melt line, and there's nothing you can do to fix that, really. I mean, you could put a bit of filler over it, but ideally, one smooth cut. If you don't, what you call it, if you don't hold it firmly down and follow that guide, you get this sort of lump. Do you see it? Yeah, now the problem is, yeah, it's incredibly difficult to come back in afterwards and cut that off. without getting a deeper melt line from where the heat sort of melted it back a bit. So you really do have to go with one smooth action with all of this. Okay, so right, just let me recap because, you know, I'm with building, you see, this is the challenge. When I normally do my back to basics videos, I'm just showing you techniques, yeah? So I'm sort of getting a little confused as I'm trying to be comprehensive on the techniques at the same time as get the materials ready to show you something that's built. We'll do that, guys. Don't worry, guys. We always get there in the end. Right. Uh, we've covered all the angle bevels. We've covered using guides. We've covered using the, what you call it, uh, the little beveling tool. We've covered angle bevels. <sighs> Anything else bevel-wise I need to cover? No, I think we've covered that. Right. Next one, engraving. Yeah, because this stuff does engrave really well. But what I need to do first is I've got quite a bit of sort of cutting and stuff for our build. So I'm going to crack on with that. Okay, guys, I know so I said I would do engraving next, but I was just thinking about basing it, and I thought, you know what? It's too cold and horrible to go out and, and cut an MDF base for it, and it'll be too much of a palaver just for one single base. So I'm going to base it on, bl on blue foam. Now, you can base your buildings on blue foam. I would, I would only sort of recommend it if you're doing them for yourself, they're your own personal collection. If you're doing anything for club terrain or anything that's going to get any sort of hammer, stick with 6mm MDF or 3mm MDF, but stick with a, a proper base to it. Yeah, but in this case, it gives me an opportunity to show you something and, you know, it saves me going outside. So what I want to do is I want to do, sort of do like a little rocky, chippy effect around the edge, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and then just chip in like that. Yeah. And as I said, this stuff is really good for, it's high density, so it, it chips really nicely, it doesn't rip. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to chip around here, I'm also going to, watch call it, sort of chip into the chips, all the way through. So it sort of changes the, the sort of contour of the baseline, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and it's exactly the same when you're doing sort of battle damage, etc. Then just very simply, 
yeah, just take off the edges. And once I'm happy with that, I've got some 150 grit sandpaper, yeah, and I'm just going to roughly go over it just to take those sort of rough cut edges off. Yeah, now obviously when you're sanding it, you should wear a dusting mask. Yeah, I'm not right now because I'm not really sanding it that much. But, you know, consider your health. <laughs> Forget about mine. Right, so there you go. Yeah. So what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to do that all the way around it. Yeah, and I'll show you when it's done. Right, guys, there we are. That's our lazy base done. Yeah, and as you can see, it's quite a nice rock effect. Yeah, it'll paint up really nice. Yeah, and it'll do well. Like I say, if you're making terrain, I really recommend you go for MDF. But it's here, it was easier than MDF, so I've done it out of that. Right, next job. We finally got to the engraving. Right. Yeah, all I'm going to engrave on this project is the door. Let me zoom the camera in. Okay, what we've got here is the back piece to the door. Yeah, so if I get my door, yeah, uh, it's going to sit like that. Okay, and then I'm going to, you know, I'll engrave the detail on that. Now, before I engrave the detail, one thing that I'm going to be doing with all these pieces is I've got, uh, what do you call it, 150 grit sandpaper here. And I'm just going to sand the sides just a little, yeah, just to change the texture a bit. Okay, so that's the normal texture. Okay, and that's it all smoothed out. Right. One, it helps get away, get rid of those guidelines, and two, it gives me a better surface to paint, in my opinion. Right, so where's my T-square? Yeah, so here we are. Yeah, so what I want to do is I want to do sort of like doors that come together. So let's... Mm -hmm. I'm not too happy about that. Right, so let's go for that one instead then. Well, that one. Okay, now when it comes to engraving, yeah, tool of choice is a biro. Yeah, line your ruler up, make sure you're happy with it. Okay, and then all you've got to do is simply come along and very gently put your line in. Try and keep your pressure even. Yeah, and then very much like the foam board, just come and from the other angle yeah and that will give you a nice engraved line that will show up quite clearly but it isn't too mad now very quickly on the back of this obviously you know you can do symbols Yeah, quite easily, you know, and it engraves really nicely. Yeah, so it's down to, you know, how you want to do it. Now, I wanted just to put one simple line in there. Now, the other thing I'll do is, have I got something like, yeah, let's use this. Yeah, a little bit of a brass rod. Okay, let me just position it. What I'm going to do is just come down. do some impressions. Now this stuff will take impressions, it'll take rock impressions and all those sort of things. I'll be honest with you, this isn't the best job. <laughs> Normally I'd mark these out but I'm just doing it on the fly. I don't even know if I like them to be truthful but we'll stick with it. In fact, I've already decided I don't like it, but we've done it now. I should have marked them out first. Hey ho. In fact, I don't like that that much that I'm not going to use that. Right, let's start again. No, if I bring it up. You can see the sort of impressions, but I'm not happy with it. It's not the right tool for the job. But as I said, you know, this stuff is pretty easy to 
engrave. Alright, send it. down the middle and what I'll do is I'll just carry the line straight off the top a bit further across I think yeah back to engraving eh You can't even see what I'm doing here, can you? So there you are. Done it again, very quickly. Yeah, and just put myself a simple line in. Just so that when I put that behind there, yeah, it looks a bit better. Right, that is all our cutting and our construction stuff done. Is it? Yeah. Right, I've run through all the basic cuts, I've run through the bevels, I've run through... Uh, engraving, I've shown you some of the engraving techniques. Uh, is there anything else I need to show you right now? I don't know. I don't think so, but if I, if I do think of something, I'll throw it up anyway. Right, next stage is we need to go and get ourselves set up and start to build this. So, construction techniques next, guys. Right, guys, now we're on to the actual construction techniques. We've covered all the cutting and engraving. I don't really think there's much more you need to know to do, you know, pretty reasonably good buildings. There are other techniques and that sort of stuff, and I'll cover that in a future video. But, you know, with regards to what you can do at home with simple tools, we've covered all the basics. Now, construction basics. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole build of this. Yeah, I'll do it in stages, otherwise this video will be hours long. Yeah, but you should be able to follow along pretty easily. Okay, first thing I need to do is I need to make my square, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I've cut two wider pieces and two thinner pieces, okay? And we're going to put those together in a box and fix them down onto here. Yeah, so if I move that, they've all been pre-sanded, so they've all got my nice smooth side to them. So I've got to make sure I put that on the outside. Yeah, and dead simply, what we're going to do is that is the outside. That comes in, yeah, we can use any sort of T-square, any sort of shape just to get the, the right angle, the right angle, <laughs> do it that way then, okay, yeah, as you can see what I'm doing, and what I'm going to do, in fact I'll do it this way so you can see what I'm doing, see, clever eh, yeah, make sure it's perfectly lined up, yeah, and then my choice Glue of choice is PVA. I will be using hot glue. You can't use super glue on this stuff. It melts it. You can use it for making some cool effects, but you know what I mean. You can't use it for as actual gluing pieces together. Yeah, put it in. Slide it down. Yeah, that means the excess will be on the outside. Yeah, and then get your pins. Okay. And what we want to do is just very gently in there. We don't want to go all the way through it. Okay, and then uh, next job, do the other side, and I'm going to crack on with this and get this box put together. Ah, actually, it's that next. So what we'll do is very quickly we'll put the door on ah uh, incredibly simple door PVA where it's come over the edge. Yeah, that's nice. And then once again we'll pin that. Pin that. 
pin it like that. Now with regards to the pins, yeah, you can just leave those in place until the PVA dries, yeah. Because I know that the, the pins are going to be internal on this and no one's going to see them, yeah, I'm just going to leave them in place. Yeah. Now the other thing is hot glue. I use hot glue for the internal and the strong bonds for these. Not for the detail stuff, but the basic shapes to keep them together. And very quickly, all it is is a matter of... I'll just rip that bit off. I'll grow my fingers. There we go. Right, so if I pick that up, if I just come in, and it literally is just a matter of putting a couple of quick blobs on. Now, hot glue will melt it a little, yeah, so you have to be careful about how much you put on, how hot it is, but generally, as long as you're not putting a massive pool on, it will be absolutely fine. Yeah, and when the hot glue dries, I can take these pins out if I want. Yeah, same with these, okay? Even though it's pinned and it's, it's, the PVA is drying, what I can do very quickly is just come in. And put a couple of little blobs of hot glue on it. Yeah, and what that allows it to do is, once that dry, it'll hold it in place. There'll be no wobbling or anything like that. Right, so what I need to do now is put all the basic tower together and we'll come back when that's done, yeah? I'll see you in a sec, guys. Okay, guys, there's our basic tower constructed. Okay, and as I said, it is basic, yeah? If I open it up, you can see the pins are still in place. You can see how the hot glue has secured it. What I've done is I've glued it to the base and I've just put virtual pins in to hold it onto the base because, you know, as it's foam, I can't, yeah? If this was a MDF base, what I'd probably do is just get my hot glue gun, yeah, and at an angle, drop the hot glue gun into the corners at the bottom just to fix that down on the base while I'm working on it. Now, the next thing I need to do, other than take off that little bit of plastic hot glue thingy, DMG's got a word for that, I can never remember what it is. Wisp, that's it. It's in Will of the Wisp. Right, okay, what we've got now is all our bevel cuts. Now, do you remember when we were using this little bit of balsa wood here to cut out our bevels? Yeah? Now it's time to start using these. And what we're going to do with these is they're cut in two sizes. Yeah? Like that. And the idea is that they go together like that. Okay? And then these are essentially going to go here. Yeah, so that's my next job, that's what I'm going to crack on with now. Yeah, and we'll come back once I've got all of those on, okay? Okay guys, so I've put all those in. And as you can see, yeah, it's looking rather funky. We're starting to really get that design in depth. Why is that more that way than that way? Have I done something wrong? No, I haven't. Oh, slightly off on the measurements on the door, it's slightly off-sided, never mind. Like I say, that's the problem with doing these sort of tutorials, because I'm concentrating more on doing the tutorial than the actual build, and we're building on the fly, but forgive me that one, guys. When I build normally, I don't have to worry about filming and explaining everything as I go along. But you're not here to see a wonderful building, you're here to learn the techniques, and hopefully that's what I'm doing. Right, next jobby, yeah, is the top of the tower. Now, uh, I've got a rough square, yeah, that's going to drop onto there. Then what I've got is four, what do you call the top of the towers? Crenulations, uh, what the wall? Let's call them top walls. Yeah, but basically these are going to drop in here. Yeah, very much like this. Yeah, to give us our, what's the term? Our rooftops. That's actually quite a bit wider. So I'm going to do that next, yeah, and we'll come back once that's done, and then we'll be almost there. Right, guys, there we have it. It's rough and ready, yeah, but it's going together. Uh, right, 
two more additions to do and then we're leaving it for the night to finish off tomorrow okay first off do you remember our little forms that we used to cut out our templates yeah and then our little cutting tool our balsa wood cutting tool it's over there i won't grab it but we used to bevel off those details we've made some wings there and what we're going to do is we're going to come around and sort of put these in these positions here so i'm going to do that the other thing is do you remember when we did the bevel with the hot wire cutter with that and we created those wedges what we're going to do with those wedges is we're going to come into here and we're going to actually put them in there in that gap there yeah and that's it so i'm going to crack on with that now and then i'll bring it back to you when it's all done and we can take it from there guys hey hey right they're all done now it's just a little bit of positioning here and a bit of positioning there I've given it a good PVA glue, yeah, because I'm going to be sanding it and doing some stuff once all that's dried and filling in the gaps. Yeah. So, here we have it. Yeah, you can see our bevel pieces, all our cut pieces. Yeah, and it's looking kind of funky. Now, remember, this is only a simple build, guys. Yeah, I'm not going over the top. I mean, it's already taken too longer than I expected. Everything takes longer than I expected. Right, the next job I've got to do is, quite simply, leave this overnight to dry, and then we'll come back to it in the morning, and we'll just do some finishing touches, and I'll show you how to fill the gaps and just get everything a little bit smoother. Yeah, but in the meantime, I'll leave you with that, and I will see you in the morning, guys. Yeah. I think I've decided overnight that, you know, I'm not going to try and build something when I do these back to basics guides because it, it's too complicated. It hurts my brains. I can either build or do tutorials. I can't do both. Yeah. Okay. What we're going to talk about now is last couple of techniques. We've covered all the cutting. We've covered chipping. We've covered en engraving. Very simply. Still ate that other door. <laughs> yeah. Now all we need to do is just quickly talk about these join lines and I'll just show you a quick couple of techniques just to blend these back now if I bring it up that's quite harsh yeah I would have probably got a better cut if I was doing it properly but you know I was trying to ram it through to get this done yeah that's okay you know there's a couple of join lines here yeah so what we're going to do well basically sand it this stuff sands really well now I've got two forms of sanding paper I've got some 100 git here yeah on a sanding block yeah so it was cheap and cheerful 100 grit yeah and then on top of that I've got this little nifty tool that I got from foreground yeah which is quite handy because it's quite flat and you know I can get into these corners so there's a couple of things I'm not going to do the whole model yeah because I've got a lot on to be truthful yeah but just to show you the techniques and I'll come back and, and finish it off when I've got a little bit more time yeah with these sort of join places it is a simple matter of just getting your sanding paper And sand them down like that yeah it is literally that simple yeah it sands really well just go gentle yeah yeah and that goes quite well next one these bits here yeah so I'll very quickly just Sanding paper on a sanding block. Yeah, keep it nice and parallel. Don't do that. And you can see there, okay, that's PVA glue. That can be a bit of a pain at times, yeah? So be careful when you're actually putting your PVA glue down. That If you've got edges that you're going to be sanding, that you don't get it too close to the edge, yeah? It can be cleaned off with a very sharp blade. Yeah, so very quickly. Yeah. And there you go. If I bring it back it's gone now okay but just be aware that watch it you can get that PVA looks like I've just chipped it then because I'm messing about 
it's all right, I've got a battle damage this anyway. Right, filling in these actual lines and these gaps and that sort of stuff. A couple of basic tools. You can use mini putt, okay, you can use green stuff if you're rich. Yeah, my preference is all purpose filler. Yeah, a premium brand, I use B&Q's premium band. Yeah, basically because it's quite water resistant. Okay, which means when I paint it, it's not going to go like slop again or anything like that. So you can stipple with it and do those sort of things. Yeah. Now, two tools. Yeah, obviously a plaster scraper. Yeah, and also a sculpting tool with a flat head. So this one's got a flat head there, and on that side, it's got a flat head there. Yeah, and just to fill the gaps, it is literally just a matter of getting a little bit of filler on. Yeah, what you want to do is just touch it over the gaps. Yeah, and if you've got a thicker gap, obviously, put a little bit more in. Yeah, now, you can use the finger method. Yeah, which will give you that. Which is pretty good for tabletop, okay? Obviously, if you've got deeper ones that you need to fill, then... Mm, get your filler. And then once again, finger technique. Yeah, if I bring that up now. There you are. That's gone in. That's blended in quite nicely. Yeah, I've got a bit left on here, so very quickly just show you something else. Yeah, the sculpting tool is really good for places like, do you see how we've got a gap there? Yeah, yeah, we can put our filler in, yeah, and then use the flat edge of the blade. He says, come on, Bose. Why did I do that? Yeah, and yeah, and if I hold that up now, yeah, simple patching. Yeah, so as you can see, it is a really easy patch. What you can do afterwards if you want to is just give it go over it quickly again when it's dried with the sandpaper and just watch it smooth it all out. Now, like I say, I am, I am a bit rushed today, so I haven't got time to sort of go round and do all these edges. So I'm going to leave this as it is now. The main reason being is because it's covered all the techniques, and I don't want this to become a crazy long video. Yeah, and I've got to edit this up in all sorts yet. So much to do, so little time. So there you have it, guys. Yeah, some very basic techniques. Obviously, you've got the plaster scraper. If I was doing, uh, like this one here, yeah, plaster scraper would probably be better yeah then the sculpting tool on the smaller ones the sculpting tool that you know we like sculpting tools okay guys so let's i'm sorry this this building isn't you know better you know i feel a bit embarrassed showing it yeah but i was sort of concentrating on doing the tutorial and all that sort of stuff so forgive me guys i can't make better things honest <laughs> okay guys right uh, you will see this coming up in a future tutorial when we talk about doing concrete effects and weathering and all sorts of staining and rust ah, damn yeah rust I need to put some metal work on it see that's why we haven't finished it there's more to do on it anyway with regards to this video what we've we covered we've covered all the cutting techniques uh, straight cutting angles 
uh, round cutting, we've talked about various beveling techniques, you know, we talked about beveling techniques to get this sort of effect, we've talked about beveling techniques and using that little tool of mine to sort of get that effect, we've talked about construction techniques, we've talked about uh, chipping, uh, we've talked about filling the gaps and everything, so I think pretty much we've covered it guys. So there you have it guys, uh, with all that information you should be in a pretty good place now to be able to make your own foam board buildings, whether they're, you know, 40k ruins or fantasy cathedrals or, you know, a scale replica of a train station somewhere, I don't know, yeah, but those are the skills you need. Uh, hope you found it interesting, <laughs> sorry for about the few mistakes and things like that, but you know, it's a Melvid. <laughs> I don't do perfect, you know, we, we film it as we go, you see what happens, you know, and if I make a mistake or, you know, if something doesn't look good, we're honest about it, yeah? Well, at the end of the day, I think, from my personal point of view, I think that way you see that you don't get this illusion of what you call it, perfection when you watch people and everything's perfect. No, it isn't perfect. Loads of things messed up, but you can fix them. And that's what I like showing in my vids. Anyway, guys, as always, yeah, if you've got anything to add, any comments, any questions, in the comments, guys, you know, in the comments. Uh, always like it, always share it if, you, if you're really sort of generous. And if you really do love what I do, check out Patreon and consider tipping me a book a month, yeah, because all that sort of money goes to improving the camera kit and improving these tutorials, yeah. So in the meantime, I've got tons to do, so I will see you in the next video. Hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. All the best. Tara.